Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about self-referencing models. Models that basically refer to themselves in order to set up a structure which allows you to, well, reuse uh, connections and reuse a certain structure. The best idea that I can give you behind this is imagine the folder structure on your computer. If you go to your computer settings uh, somewhere, you have a folder filled with all these kinds of uh, pictures of your last holiday, for example. But within that folder of pictures of your last holiday, you can set up another folder and you can put like all kinds of pictures in there and even more documents. And within that folder, you can put another folder. So basically ordering folders within folders. What we are going to be doing is we're going to set up a uh, system in which we can comment underneath our project management applications projects. But beneath those comments, I would also like to place a little comment to reply to the person posting that comment. So we're going to be setting up comments and a self-referencing model. So let's get building. So first things first, we're going to be adding the comment model to our well, data model overview, of course. So to our model overview, add a new model, and this is going to be called comment. Within our comment model, I would like to have the property called message of the type multi-line, because I would like, oh, message, because I would like to uh, have someone when they're commenting be allowed to use more than just one sentence of text to explain what they're feeling or thinking that's important and i'm also making sure that it is required that way uh, people cannot just send empty messages that's a bit meaningless and dull so allow them to fill in something proper so once we've created the comment model we're going to our schema model overview and we're going to be connecting the project and comment together so here we go. I'm going to drag the relation from project to model. And now I can say that one project can have many comments. If you've dragged it the other way around, it will look something like belongs to. So uh, many comments belong to one project. But as long as you try to have the one side on project and multiple side of the relation, the, the multi side of the relation to comment, because that's what we want. One comment or one project can have multiple comments. Now we can dive into our project detail page. So within our project detail page, um, I was thinking let's have the comment section at the bottom of the page. That is where we currently have a send status email and a project PDF uh, button. Uh, I've created this in a previous video. Uh, I'm going to drag this upward because I feel like that is where it deserves to be. Um, well, let's put it underneath the project name. I feel like that's a, a nice place. Um, if you feel like you want these buttons somewhere else or just at the bottom of the page, leave them there because this is about your project detail page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my component set, I'm going to grab the two column and I'm going to put that underneath my task overview. And here I'm going to add a, an action or a form. I want to say a form in which we can add the comments and on the right hand side, I'm going to add a data list in which we can view all the comments. So let's dive into our create form. In the first column, select the comment model and then I'm going to say, we're going to add them only the message, not the project just yet, because look at what we're going to be doing next. So we have the message uh, property over here, save. This way a user can uh, well fill in a nice little message. Um, and then besides that, we also want to provide the project on, well, from the page. Uh, and luckily everything on this page is within a uh, project uh, data container. So what we can do is we can look with between the form components for the hidden input. And what we're going to be doing is secretly adding the project ID once we are passing through a comment, because that way uh, in our comment overview, we will only be showing comments from this specific 
project. Otherwise, we will be showing comments from all kinds of projects. And let me tell you, that probably would end up being a very big mess. <laughs> so uh, we got this going on. We got this going on. Uh, then let's dive into the action because uh, I've selected the entire create form. Gonna click on the pencil for the action. First things first, always remember to change the name of the action and permissions to do what you want it to do. The action name is going to be uh, place comment under or comment under project. There we go. And the permissions, I would like everyone to be able to comment because I think that's a fair right. Everyone is allowed to have their comments. Then we have to dive into the input variables because right now we have an ID that has been created. That is the hidden ID that is being passed to us and a message. Well, that is awesome because that is also what we want to use. But if we cl click on the create record, only the message is being created. And what we also want to create in here is the connection with the project that we currently are on, which with the project we are commenting under. So I'm going to go into the action variables and add the project, or let's call it the existing project from the project model. And we are going to filter the project ID on the idea that we are passing via the hidden input, meaning that we will get the same project uh, in our action as the project we have on our page. So press save, close, and now within the create record, cre create a comment, it actually is the create record step in which we are creating a comment. We are already creating a message, but right now we are also going to be combining the message to the project we are commenting on. So press save. And once the action has been compiled, the action is ready to use. So let's dive back into our page. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to show a list of wonderful comments. So I'm going to do that using the data list option. So here we have a data list and this data list I am going to use to show comments. So I'm going to show comments and I only want to show comments in here. So on from which the project ID equals the ID from the project on the page. So again, it's a lot of uh, filtering. It's a lot of uh, making sure that everything regarding the IDs is equal. If I would have project number one, but I would show the comments from project number two, again, it would turn into a big mess. So right now we want to make sure that the project from within our database is equal to the project on our page. So we're going to grab the ID from the project on our page and the one within our database. Apply, save. And now the only thing we have to do is make sure that within this data list, we're also displaying it a little bit nice. So I was thinking of using the paper component. So here we have the paper component. Let me select the data list and we're going to be going for the grid type or the inline type. Let's have a look and see what's what's better. If we're using 100% max width. There we go. This is this is the this is what I would like. So we have columns um, and the data list. I'm making sure that the type is grid with a max width of 100%. We are using the entire width of the column above it then the only couple of things we need to do is, um, well, make sure that we rename the data list to the comment data list, because within this data list, we are going to show the comments, of course. So let's also open up the text field. There we go. Then within this text field, we are going to say comment, and we're going to be selecting the comments data. So comment, message, make sure that we show the proper message. And well, we are showing, uh, we're going to the data list not right now, the filter that we have set is uh, the common project ID equals project ID. So every message should be a different message belonging to this project. 
Now, the only thing we need to do is make sure that once we actually comment on our project, that this data list is also immediately refreshed. So we can do that by going to the create form, opening up the interaction sec section and adding a new interaction. That is going to be an on action success refetch the comment data list. So we want to refresh whatever we are pulling in and there we go. So let's make sure to test this out. So let's open up our application, press play. And right now let's just go to uh, my project overview. Uh, if you open up your detail page, make sure to check your URL because uh, it might open up without any ID in the URL. So let's uh, say, ooh, making pancakes. Sounds like a fun uh, project. So um, in here, I am going to add the message, save me some, I would love a pancake heart sent. And the comment immediately says, save me some, I would love a pancake. Form successfully been submitted, and everyone can add messages and com or messages right now. You could even add the username to it, but that's something we're gonna do later. I'm going to cut this in two because otherwise it's going to be a pretty long video. Uh, in the next guide or in the next video, we are going to add comments underneath these comments. So see you there.